Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very interesting topic. What is the key difference between function analysis which is step number 3 as per FMEA AIG VDA handbook and its comparison with function which is as per FMEA 4th edition. Now before going further, it is very important to understand what exactly is a function analysis. And it is linked with structure analysis, which is step number two. So, when we were talking about structure analysis, if we see the example of this particular pen, the intent was that how is the fitment between, say, the upper cover and the lower cover, how is the fitment of this pen with this cover, and how is the fitment of this top cover with this particular thing. So, that was what we were trying to understand in structure analysis. Now, that was step number two. Now, the step number three, which is function analysis. Now we want to understand what exactly is the function of this pen and what are the requirements. Say for example, we say that the simple function of the pen is to write smoothly, right? Or when we are holding it, we should feel comfortable in holding it. But what's the requirement? The requirement could be the ink should be green, yellow, blue, red, whatever we think. Or maybe the life of the ink should be say 1000 hours or something like that. So that's a requirement. So this is in general in short with respect to the function analysis which is directly linked with the structure analysis. So in this particular video I am going to talk in detail about what is FMEA, what are the 7 steps of FMEA first edition, then specifically what is function analysis with respect to design FMEA and process FMEA. Then I will be also talking about the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to FMEA as well as with respect to the function analysis. So let's start first with the basic definition of FMEA. So when we say FMEA, so basically FMEA is a team oriented, systematic, qualitative and analytical method to identify, analyze and mitigate the technical risk which is related to the product and the manufacturing process. One very important thing about FMEA is it is before the event, not after the event. So before starting the product design or before starting the manufacturing design, we need to make DFME and PFME. Now there are seven key steps as per FMEA first edition. The first step is about planning and preparation. The second step is about structure analysis. The third one is about function analysis for which we are talking today. The fourth one is about failure analysis. The fifth one is about risk analysis. The sixth one is about optimization and the seventh and the last one is about documentation and how to close and do everything with respect to that. So that's all the seven steps are there. So now to specifically talk about function analysis. So when we say function analysis, what does it mean? Let's understand that. So when we say function analysis, basically it's an exploration of what the product should be doing with respect to the function analysis step. That is number one thing. Then another important thing is that what should be executed in general process and how this functionality is facilitated that is another thing to understand here. One very important thing is that it is a key output of structure analysis which is step number 2. So unless and until structure analysis is done correctly, we will never be able to do the function analysis correctly. Then another important thing the focus should be the right question is that what does the thing that we want to analyze do. So once we ask the right question, we will get the right answer. Then as I said earlier also, the results of the structure analysis are a crucial input for the function analysis. And we must understand that if we are making the functional analysis correctly, then whatever we are doing further with respect to the failure analysis and risk analysis, that will be right in the right direction. And there are certain diagrams which we are using for understanding the function analysis and for that P diagram is one of the key things that we are using it. There are some key objectives with respect to the function analysis. Let us understand that. So the first one is that primarily it is a graphical analysis or graphical representation wherein we put in three different steps to understand about the entire process. Then we are using P diagram and process flowchart as I said earlier also. Another important thing is that we need to identify who are the internal and external customers, what are the functions and what are the requirements with respect to that. And then we need to link all those things with respect to the requirements and the characteristics. Another important thing is that it is a CFT approach, cross functional team approach. So it is important to know 
and to make sure that the people from different processes should be a part of this particular discussion and lastly if we are doing this functional analysis correctly then it is a very good input and the right input with respect to the failure analysis now let's understand a little bit what what exactly the function means so when we say function it means that what exactly we are intending to do maybe with respect to pfme or dfme primarily if we talk about it's an input and output and we are trying to understand what is the relationship between input and output by understanding that what exactly is happening in between as you can see in the picture that whatever inputs are coming and whatever outputs are coming they will all depend upon what exactly is happening in the system and what kind of interfaces it is going through with respect to that to understand little bit more about function analysis it's also important that how we are correctly specifying the functions because if you are specifying the functions correctly we can understand the failures also correctly so there are two particular things that are talking about the one is verb and other is noun and verb should be an action verb so it should reflect something that what exactly is happening and when we talk about noun it is talking about something measurable which we can count which we can measure that how much is the value or how much is the data with respect to that so let's take an example that when we talk about function it first of all it should be in present tense so it can be deliver contain control drill insert all these are some of the examples and when we attach a noun which is a measurable one then it becomes deliver power contain fluid control speed drill hole insert pin so these are some of the examples with respect to the function now the second part is what is the requirement so if we see the definition as per iso 9000 2015 version here the intent is that what exactly is the need or expectation with respect to the design or with respect to the manufacturing process and if you go by fmea first edition there are five key sources of requirements the first one is with respect to the legal requirement so it can be with respect to recycling environment and many thing else the second is with respect to the industry norms and standard which may be relevant for that particular product and process say for example iso 26262 which is related to functional safety the third one very important is about customer requirements the customer is giving drawings technical specifications so that also becomes a very important requirement the fourth one is internal requirement organization also has their own requirements what they specify it can be in terms of manufacturability or packaging or anything else also and lastly the product characteristics we also define certain product characteristics it could be the diameter it could be the surface finish and all those things so once we are clear about the function we are clear about the requirement and when we use the p diagram it becomes very easy to do a function analysis where we can identify that what exactly is a function of a particular process and what exactly is a requirement and how it is linked with the lower end process and the upper end process to take an example with respect to dfme if you can see the picture here you will find that it is talking about the number one is about next higher level number two is talking about the focus element for which we are doing that particular analysis and the third one is next lower level and if you see on the left hand side in fme fourth edition the only thing that was specified was function and through that you need to understand and identify what exactly it means so in fme first edition things have been made little bit more clear if you take one more example with respect to a bicycle so if we start from serial number 2 that is focus element so that is talking about torque generation if you link it with serial number 3 that is the next lower level that is talking about power transmission and the overall intent with respect to the higher level which is serial number 1 is to provide a transportation for one minimum person so by that we can understand this particular thing little bit more clearly now similarly we can also see the process fme here also the things are being specified in three different parts and the idea is to make the things more clear and these three parts are the process item process step and the last one is work elements and if you see on the left hand side in fme fourth edition the previous version only the function was specified so it was up to the cft to decide how to make uh, this thing more clear and how to depict it correctly so let's take one example here 
Now here again if you take uh, serial number 2 which is talking about the process step. So here we are talking about press in centered bearing to achieve actual position in pole housing to maximize the gap per print. Now when we link it with serial number 3 which is about the work element and then if we can link it with serial number 1 then things become little bit more clear and understandable. Here one very important thing is on serial number 1 is that we are not only focusing on the next process in the organization but we are also looking at that what can be its impact at the customer end and what can be its impact at the end user end and once we understand all that then things become little bit more clear. Now in making functional analysis it is very important to use two particular diagrams one is a P diagram and another is a process flow chart. So let us understand a little bit about what exactly is P diagram. So when we talk about P diagram or parameter diagram we mean to say basically we are trying to characterize the behavior of a system or a, con or a component in context of a single function and there are certain things uh, by which we can make this P diagram and these includes inputs, function, functional requirements, control factors non-functional requirements, intended output, unintended outputs and lastly the noise factors and once we are clear about it we can make the PA diagram effectively and that will be a very good input for making the design of any. Something similar is with process flow chart. When we talk about process flow chart our intent is to see that how is a process is flowing in the organization from incoming to dispatch and once it is clear to us things become little bit easy and clear to us and we can identify that for each process what can be the function of it and what can be the requirement that we need to meet. Lastly if I talk about the summary with respect to design FME and process FME with respect to functional analysis. So first of all it is an output of structure analysis. If structure analysis is done correctly, then function analysis can be done correctly. Secondly, whenever we are making the function analysis, it should be in present tense and we have to think about two particular things, a verb and a noun. Verb should be an action noun and noun should be measurable like power transmission, insert drill, something like that. And thirdly, we have to write failure analysis in positive because the negative will automatically become a failure analysis. If I talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to failure analysis as well as if I link with FME in general that how often the CFT who is making the FME they are clear about the requirements stated in step number 2 and step number 3 because unless and until we are clear about these requirements we will never be able to identify the right functions and requirement and if they are not right the failure analysis will not be right. The second and the very important thing is that how often the CFT is making or making the use of block diagram, P diagram, process flow chart, structure tree while making the structure analysis and functional analysis because unless and until we are using these diagrams we will never be able to identify the right things which should be discussed in the failure analysis. Well, my next video will again be in continuation of the same FMA series and here I will be talking about step number 1 that is about the planning and preparation and how it is different from FMA 4th edition. Regularly I am getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand about this video much more detail, so if you see there is a link below, if you click that you will find a blog there and there you will find this information in much much more detail. And in case you are liking these kind of videos, you can always share your video friends and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavyamangla.com. Thank you.